The following example uh, came from a VBA code that was written by a guy by the name of Andy Pope. Uh, it was written in German, so um, I assume maybe he's both an English speaker and German. Okay, basically, I'm going to show you how the code works and then I'll go ahead and explain it. Okay, let's go ahead and run the code. For those people who like to publish ebooks, EPUB version, or the Mobi, you know it gets it's time consuming if you want to write your own VBA code. So Andy came up with a great way of writing the bold and italics and uh, underline. Well, I took his uh, code and just changed it just a little bit, just a tiny bit, but I left it, uh, you know, mostly the way he did it. The only thing that I really did was I added a paragraph. Uh, code that would actually at the very end convert it all each one of the lines to paragraphs. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. Let's go ahead and run it. I broke it up into individual ones. I w I'm going to run the bold by itself, the italics by itself. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay. That's not what we want. Let's undo that. Okay. All right, let's go back up here and see what happened. One, two. Okay, this is what we want. We want the bold first. So let's go ahead and try and run that again. Watch what happens. This is Andy's code. As I said, he wrote it in German, and an alert box pops up and shows you that the first word that was found, see how it's bold? and it places bold tags around it. Let's see if there's another bold. No, there isn't. Now let's go OK. Let's pull it over here. We're going to go OK. And now let's go down to the italics. If there was more, it would, it would have run each one of them. So let's go ahead and run the italics now. Same thing. See? See it's italic. And it basically found the italics and it put you know, the tags around it. Let's go ahead and run the bold. I'm sorry, the underline. So, let's go ahead and do that one. Do the same thing for underline. and see how it underlined. Now we're going to do blue. Let's go ahead and change this in front of you. I'm going to highlight this and choosing blue from your font up here is not going to work. This is not really blue. It may say that it's blue right here, and even this may say, see how it says it's blue? But let me show you what happens if I was to select this. Now I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go into the font, we're going to go here, we're going to go more colors. Look at this. See, that's the RGB for that. That's not true blue because the red is zero, but there's a lot of green in there. And the blue is only 192. If it was true blue, it would be 0 for red, 0 for green, and 255 for blue. So we're going to go ahead and change that. Because if we don't, it will not work. Now this is... go. Okay, now see how dark that is? That's true blue. And we need it to be true blue in order for this code to work. So let's go ahead and run the blue, um, the font code now. Let's, this is it right here, and I only have one for blue. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay. Come on. Let's go. That's wondering why this is not working for me. Let's try. This is not blue. I'm going to try it, but I know it's not going to work. My blue is not working for me. Let's try it again. Let's go in here. Font. More colors. Custom. Zero. Zero. And 255. I worked very hard on this code. I don't know why it's not working for me now. Okay. And I'm going to, just to make certain this RGB, I'm going to do this one. Uh, 
usually when you are dealing with farm, um, uh, VBA, once you run the code once, it's kind of like difficult to get it to work right. So let's go in here and we're going to change this to zero, zero, two, five, five. Now in case the blue right there doesn't work, the RGB, let's hope that that works. So once again, let's open up this, go into the blue, and they both did work that time. See, there's one that it changed and to change the other. So, as you can see, if there were two in there that were found that were blue, true blue, it would put the font, you know, color blue and, you know, the parent and the mother and the father tag around them. Alright, now the last one that you run is the paragraph. You do not, I repeat, you do not run the paragraph before any of the others. It must be the last one that you run, and I'll show you why. As you can see, the bold is still bold, italics is still italic, underline is still underline, even after it puts the tags around it. Blue is still blue. But watch what happens when I do the uh, paragraph, and this is why you have to run it last. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Alright, notice how it changed all of it to green text. All of it. And it got rid of the formatting and everything. That's why you must not run that first. It must be the last thing that you do. Now, we go, we're going to select it, copy it. We're going to open up a notepad. We're going to paste the contents in the notepad. We're going to go File, Save As. I'm just going to put a number 1 here, dot htm to change make this htm an html file you see what i did one dot html instead of just saving this text so i'm going to save this to the folder i've been working in now let's open it up let's go and find it in the folder let's see here Okay, here's the photo. So we're going to click it. We're going to open with... I'm going to open it with Google Chrome. And there we go. That's what we have. See? It did it all. And that's how you use this code to write your ebooks, uh, whether it's an EPUB uh, format or a Mobi. I hope you enjoyed this, and we must give full credit to Andy Pope for coming up with the code. I just enhanced it just a little bit. Most of it is still Andy's, so I don't want to take any credit for that. I want to make certain that Andy gets his credit. Uh, I'll also post a link to Andy's original uh, code so that uh, you can thank him for it and acknowledge him.